Hey guys, and welcome back to another Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be going over a basic system of velocity based camera positions. So, what I mean by that is if we're running, the camera will zoom out, and when we're walking, it will be closer again. So, let me show you what I mean by that. So, we're walking, this is our camera position. If I now run, it's going to zoom out, and then when I stop running and start walking again, it's going to go back in to our normal position like this. So, you sometimes see this in different types of games, and I'm going to be showing you how to do this today. And obviously you can change how zoomed in and zoomed out it gets, and the speed it does that too as well. But I'm going to be showing you how to do this and it's very easy to build upon and customise to get it perfect for you. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So this is actually a very easy thing to do. So all we need to do is open up our character blueprint, which for me is content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character, but for you it could be third, first, whatever you've named it. Although actually obviously it wouldn't be first person, because you wouldn't want the camera to be going out like that. But what we're going to do in here is right click and add a custom event somewhere in our event graph. And I'm just going to name this one move camera because that's what I want this to do. I want it to move the camera in or out. And I'm going to select that and add an input. And I'm going to name this running question mark, keeping it as a Boolean. Apparently I can't name it that. So run question mark like so. I think it might be keeping in memory why I had it last time. So I can't have it the same thing. But essentially, yes, you do need a Boolean input of running or run or is running, anything like that. And then after this, we're going to hold down B and left click to get a branch, connecting the condition into running input there and the execution in there like so. So when we call this event, it's going to see if we're running or not. If we are, so if true, we're going to add a timeline. And I'm going to name this one move camera T for timeline. And false that branch is going to go in reverse with true going into play like so. So if we are running, we're going to play it. If we're not running, we're going to reverse it. Because play will zoom out, reverse will zoom in. So what we're going to do is then drag in a reference to our camera boom, or for you this might be called spring arm, from the top left up here, because this is what controls the position of our camera. So we're going to drag out of that and set target arm length, because the target arm length is how far out the camera is. And that will go into update at the timeline there, because this is the value that we want to update via this timeline. And for the target arm length, we could use a lerp, but what I'm going to do instead is find out what values I want. So by default, it is at 300, and you can check by selecting the camera boom there and seeing the target arm length is 300. So when we're normally walking, it's 300. So when I'm running, I want it to be 600. You can mess about those settings to get them perfect for you, but that's what I want. So I'm going to double click the timeline to open it up, setting the length to be about one second. Again, you can set that to whatever you like. This is just how long it will take to zoom in and out and one second is great for me. I'm then going to add a flow track, naming this one move camera track. And I'm going to right click on this and add key to curve float, the time of zero and a value of 300. Because again, I wanted to start at walking and go out to running. Then I'm going to right click, add another key with a time of one or at the end of your timeline and value of 600. Or again, the value you want for when it is now running. So 300 at the start is walking, 600 at the end is running. And I'm going to press zoom to fit vertical and horizontal just so I can see this here. And as you can see, it's going to go from 300 all the way to 600. And then when we reverse it, it'll go from 600 to 300. So we compile and save and close that timeline and just connect the move camera track into the target arm length there. And that is how we're going to move the camera. So if we are running, it will play it, and zoom out. If we're not running, it will reverse it and zoom in, setting the target arm length perfectly like so. Now to call this, that's very simple as well. You're just going to want to go to your sprinting code. Now this is what I have here, very simple code. If you don't have this, then obviously you just copy this, or you can watch my video on sprinting and stamina as well, which I'll leave a link to in the description down below and on screen now. But after this, what we want to do is just simply call function. So drag out of this and call function move camera there, the custom event we just made. And when we are running, so off of pressed, I'm going to tick run there and off of release. So when we're walking, we stop running. I'm going to again call function move camera, leaving this one as false. So we know if we are or aren't running. So we compile, save, hit play, and this should be working. So if we walk, nothing happens. If we run, it's going to zoom out over one second. And if we stop running and walking now, it's going to zoom back in over a second. So that works perfectly for us. So the camera position is going to change based on our velocity or essentially if we are running or walking or not. So I think that'll be it for this video, is we've done everything we want to do. We've set up a very simple system in which we can just zoom the camera up when we're running, 
and zoom it back in when we're walking. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.